I think Pierce Brosnan was the was Bond when I you know the first time I kind of came into it, um, and I know this is incredibly nerdy, but I kind of grew up playing video games, so uh, you know GoldenEye was the big game, and that kind of brought me to the films. And uh, yeah, I mean, just that sound is so different from anything else that anybody really does in film, especially nowadays. And, you know, even when we were recording cues uh, with the brass yesterday, it's like the second you hear those kind of yeah. sounds, you instantly know it's a Bond film. First of all, how it happened was that Hans called me and, and he said, right, James Bond, you fancy doing it? So I said, well, you know, what took you? What took you so long? Uh, and because to me, it's a, I associated with the guitar, you know. Uh, I now since know from working with Steve that, believe it or not, that brass, you know, I wasn't quite as aware of just what a, a big, big part of the the, sound, the soundscape that uh, the brass was. And uh, and um, but so I I was like, well, I'm, th I'm thinking, well, it's a it's a guitar featured thing. So I was obviously very flattered, very felt very privileged to do it and, and honoured. I thought, well, yeah. I think I think I can, I can do that with a certain with a certain sound. What's you have to pay tribute and be appropriate to the original thing, but without pastiching it too much. Uh, as a musician, it's been great. I mean, it's, it's a really it's a it's a dream job as a guitar player, and as as a British guitar player, I think it's a dream job, and you know, and it's a real honour. But just as a musician, anyway. I always really love working with Steve and Hans because I get to find out stuff that I wouldn't normally find out. I remember there was a certain point when Hans came in and said to me that I was paying slightly too much respect to the chord changes he'd written and he wanted me to be free, to, which was a very generous thing and very helpful um, because I, he wanted me to be a, a bit more express, be myself a little more. And if maybe, you know, I can answer the question for these guys, I think that's what happened with, with both Hans and Steve in that they were very respectful to what James Bond is historically mm -hmm. and the legacy and all of that. And, and, and the other thing, which is a real skill about being appropriate to the film, mm -hmm. you know, that first and foremost. Um, but, but at the same time, being themselves as well, you, have to be super, you can't be so respectful that you can't have your own voice. It's a constantly evolving process, and actually the constantly evolving process is to look at the character and go, oh, hang on a second, you know, he's moving a bit like this, it's a bit, it's lit differently. This is, you know, oh, look at this, the DP is doing something really interesting with the light. Mm -hmm. So that calls for certain colours in the orchestra, or that calls for certain bits of electronica, or w whatever it is, you know, it's... Um, and then, of course, we push it until somebody tells us to stop. For me, coming to it from outside, from rock music almost, there's bits that simply sometimes you expect something to be really loud and you discover that it's much more effective when it's really mm -hmm. quiet. And silences and things like that, these are all things that I'm starting to know. It's more and more the more I, I, I've worked on these films. And uh, it's just not doing the obvious. There's a sensitivity, there's a grown-up sensitivity to this film, which I think um, is really good. And, 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 and the film starts, starts off from, from, from sort of a place of tragedy, mm -hmm. you know, and um, it does, doesn't start off with a, like, with a fun chase. It's, it, it starts in a much darker place. Um, and give me dark, I'm happy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, it, 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 it inspires. I just can't say it enough, and often enough that Michael and Barbara are just, you know, we are so, we feel so, so safe and so mm -hmm. supported because they really know what they're doing, you know. Um, it's very rare that that you get producers who are that familiar with. Very rare, it's impossible. There is nobody else in this world who has lived the material in one way or the other the way they have. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
you don't even need to ask the question. You just need to look over your shoulder and see how they're reacting to a certain bit to know if you're on the right track yeah. or if you need to go and steer it a bit in a certain direction. But a couple of times when in meetings and when we've been going through bits of music and uh, Daniel Craig's name's come up about his, how he feel about the, mu the music. It's, bec it bec it's become quite evident early on just how how much he cares about about yes. the work. And um, in my limited experience, that's um, I'm sure all actors do, but uh, leading actors do. But it, it's evident to everybody on the team that he's he really is is into every aspect of it, and the music's very very important. And um, and he really he's. Uh, super invested in that side of it and that's kind of helped the atmosphere i think and it's added a, a sort of a, just another dimension to it i think you just look at what's on screen and and you get so much from the actors on screen that it, it kind of in a funny way with all the material that's been written in all the past films it, it ends up slightly writing itself and then you tinker with it until you've broken it a little bit and made it kind of your own on, on, you know before it before it becomes something new and, and something exciting but still feels like it's in that world the job of the, the certainly the guitar in the, in the music is often certainly when there's action no doubt about that when bond is about to go into bond mode you know with, whether it's a car chase or heroic i think yeah. That's, I have that association, like when he's about to be heroic, suddenly you hear the guitar, which is great, I can do that, but this will be fun. But there's also intrigue as well, I think, which was one of the things that is, is come from the old John Barry uh, legacy. For me it was really easy, because I went, if there is one genre of movies, that Johnny Marr was born for to play. It's this one. I yeah. said, just be yourself. Yeah, it's, no, it's been very lucky. I mean, the other thing as well, getting too corny about it, it everyone's friends, you know, everyone's yeah. working a yeah. high level of of uh, ambition uh, and a lot's expected of, of, of everybody. Hang on, What I see, though, is that everybody kind of mates. One of the first things was being given this file of a uh, Billie Eilish song that, that she and her brother Phineas had done. And it was just a demo. And instantly going, I don't want to hear anything else. This is it. And th there was a bit of, but there are all these other people who've written you know, <laughs> songs. And I said, I don't, I don't want to hear anything else. Let's, this, this feels like a story to me, even though they don't know the story, this feels like a story to me. And it feels, feels relevant and it feels, um, it feels like a young person with, a, with an amazingly old heart at the same time. So, so it, it traveled across time for me. This place, George Martin, I mean, we're at Air Studios, George Martin gave me my very first paying job. Um, I've done a hundred something movies maybe here. Um, this is up, uh, this is so home from home that I, I, I was actually here when they were constructing it so I can tell you what's in the walls. Um, and it feels it feels really important that 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 what what we do this thing where we mix electronics where we mix rock and roll where we mix orchestra where we live by the edicts that duke ellington gave all of us there are only two types of music good music and bad music and that we keep orchestras alive and we keep places like this going and 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 a movie like this lets you do this i mean right now you have probably the world's most extraordinary brass players mm. sitting down there yeah. um, making a racket. It's pretty ex extraordinary. The images and the sound are one and they create an experience that you have, haven't had before and that we, the music, are like opening doors mm. and inviting you in to have an experience and to feel something. We're not going to tell you what it is, and we're not going to tell you what to feel, but just to have the possibility of having experience. I think that's pretty cool.